The following presentation has been developed to provide basic lithium-ion battery information and functionality as they apply to Textron Aviation aircraft installations and service. Always follow any and all information provided by the battery manufacturer and by the aircraft's manuals. As of the time of this recording, the only main ship battery installations that are lithium-ion batteries are Longitude Model 700 aircraft. Future models will incorporate lithium-ion battery technology into their builds. This general information will apply to future battery installations as well. Some of the benefits to choosing lithium-ion batteries for aircraft installation include reduced weight. Lithium-ion batteries are between 40% and 60% lighter than lead-acid or NICAD batteries. Superior power performance. Lithium-ion batteries provide three times the energy per kilogram of weight when compared to other battery types. The operational life expectancy of lithium-ion batteries is two to three times that of other batteries, with over six years of expected service life when properly maintained. You can expect better performance at extreme temperatures. With internal heaters, the batteries can support missions at temperatures as low as negative 40 degrees Celsius. Finally, lithium-ion batteries require less maintenance and do not suffer from a memory effect. Batteries used specifically for Textron Aviation aircraft will have a battery identification placard with the Textron Aviation part number and the battery's date of manufacture. Batteries used specifically for Textron Aviation will have a battery identification placard with the Textron Aviation part number and the battery's date of manufacture. The battery's date of manufacture for use in battery maintenance logs may be derived from the battery's serial number. The serial number will be in this format, where M corresponds to the month of the year, starting with A for January, B for February, C for March, continuing on to M for December. The letter I is not used. The YY corresponds with the last two digits of the year. The last five digit number, starting with a one, completes the battery's serial number and is unique to each battery. Battery terminals must be covered with non-conductive protective devices to avoid any possibility of shorting during handling, shipping, or storage. There are three electrical receptacles for the lithium-ion battery. The first one is the power terminal connector. Second is the resistive temperature devices, RTDs. And finally, the communications service port connector. The lithium-ion battery consists of metal handles at the side for carrying the battery. Hold-down flanges on the battery cover are used by the aircraft's tie-down rods to restrain the battery. The battery contains sealed lithium-ion cells. In the extremely rare event of a cell rupture or thermal runaway, the battery is equipped with a one and a half inch diameter vent on the top of the battery cover to enable any gas mixture to evacuate out of the aircraft through the aircraft's vent plumbing. The battery container is designed to withstand a cell rupture or a thermal runaway. When installed in the aircraft, Ensure that the battery vent port is properly fastened to the aircraft vent plumbing. When the battery is uninstalled from the vent plumbing or from the aircraft, place a cap over the vent port to prevent foreign object debris. The battery does not include any serviceable internal components. Do not remove the lid or loosen the lid screws. Tampering with the lid could compromise the battery's ability con to contain failure events. Removing the cover will also void the battery's warranty. The battery temperature sensor connector provides the resistant measurements for two resistant temperature devices, RTDs. RTD1, using pins A and B, is located between bank one and bank two, while RTD2, using pins C and D, is located between bank two and bank three. Typically, the lithium-ion battery monitor PCB will monitor one RTD, while the aircraft's avionics will monitor the other RTD for CAS messages. The communications service connector provides three methods of communication to and from the CMS via discrete, RS-232 serial, and ARINC-429 data. 
All three communication methods can be used to determine key battery status information. The battery is maintenance free and is rated at 26.4 volts DC with 44 amp hours. The battery consists of 19 modules of 2.4 amp hours each. Each module consists of 2.4 amp hour lithium ion cells connected in an 8 cell series to provide a nominal voltage of 26.4 volts DC. A voltage of 24 volts DC indicates that the battery is, is at a low state of charge. The lithium ion battery needs a minimum of 27 volts DC for aircraft dispatch. The 19 modules are arranged in three banks of modules. When looking at the battery's front face and power terminal receptacle, bank 1, consisting of modules 1 through 7, is on the right side. Bank 2, consisting of modules 8 through 12, behind the receptacle, and bank 3, consisting of modules 13 through 19, is on the left side. The battery has multiple layers of internal protection. In addition to the active protection in each module, the battery also has passive protection. In the rare event of a thermal runaway, thermal fuses behind the power terminals disconnect the battery from any charge source. In the event of an external short circuit, fusible links in each module will open to prevent continued excessive current discharge. Each module has a Module Management System, MMS, which provides active protection and management functions. The MMS provides active protection to prevent overvoltage. This is typically 30.4 volts to 32.2 volts instantaneous. Cell undervoltage, 2 volts per cell, except during high current engine starts below negative 10 degrees Celsius. Module undervoltage, that's 11 volts transient, over temperature stop charge, and over temperature stop discharge. The MMS also provides management functions such as cell voltage balancing and heater power. Central monitor system, CMS, inside the battery obtains sensing data from the MMS of each of the battery's 19 modules. The CMS analyzes the data and reports battery status through the communication service connector. The aircraft or any other battery service equipment can monitor the data from the communication service connector. After being fully charged, the battery's electronics will remain active above 27 volts. Below 27 volts, the electronics will enter low power mode. In low power mode, the CMS will briefly activate about every five minutes to check the battery's status. A battery fully charged to 28.5 volts will self-discharge to 27 volts in about 90 minutes. Below 27 volts, the electronics will enter low power mode. The electronics will self-discharge the battery in about six months in low power mode. When self-discharged to a voltage that is too low, the battery can be permanently damaged and may not be dispatchable. The battery should be boost charged regularly to avoid damage. If the battery's voltage gets low, it may indicate that all the battery's 19 modules have gone offline. Whenever a cell in each module falls below its minimum voltage of 2 volts, the module will disconnect from the battery terminal. The CMS is powered from the battery terminal. When the battery voltage falls too low, the CMS will not be active until the battery terminals are connected to an external power source. As a warning, a battery with an open voltage circuit of less than 20 volts can be susceptible to electronics damage. Always use the deep discharge recovery charge procedures to restore the battery. If battery servicing equipment is available, the lithium ion battery can be capacity checked while installed on the aircraft. Occasionally, a battery switch or aircraft load is left on, or a battery has been left installed in an aircraft that has not been used for an extended period of time.
When the aircraft is prepared for flight and the battery has a low voltage, follow the published service documents to prepare a deep discharge recovery charge or a conditioning charge. When the aircraft is expected to remain unoperated for at least five calendar days, all of the battery's connectors should be unplugged to prevent unintended over-discharge of the installed battery. During removal and installation, follow all instructions per the aircraft's maintenance manuals. Turn off all attached loads before disconnecting the battery harness plug. The battery power terminals are always active and energized. Do not short terminals at any time. Extreme care and caution should be used when handling and connecting to the battery. Danger of short circuit and subsequent arc flash, electrical burns, or equipment damage can occur if not handled properly. There are no limitations in storing or using lithium ion batteries in the vicinity of other battery types. These batteries do not emit or absorb any gas during storage, transportation, or during normal operating conditions. However, if a lithium ion battery has evidence of cell venting, electrolyte leakage, or electrolyte odor, do not bring the battery into the vicinity of other battery types. A new battery is shipped at 30% state of charge. The battery will need to be fully charged before installation. Policies and regulations covering shipping of lithium ion batteries include UN recommendations on the transport of dangerous goods, UN model regulations, and UN manual of tests and criteria, ICAO technical instructions, 49 CFR 173.185 covering lithium cells, and FedEx packaging guidelines for battery shipment if using FedEx for shipping. Shipping paperwork must be completed by and packaging verified by authorized hazmat agents. Each airline may also have additional restrictions. Lithium ion batteries are classified as UN 3480 and have passed UN 38.3 tests for air shipment. The batteries cannot be shipped by air if damaged, if in need of repair, or if destined for disposal or recycling. In those cases, the batteries can be shipped via ground or sea. Lithium ion batteries must be shipped at a state of charge not exceeding 30% of their rated capacity. The next two slides show an example of steps to take for proper shipping of lithium ion batteries. The power terminal connector should be covered as the terminal is always live. Caps for the vent port and connectors should be in place. Verify the CMS is functioning by pressing the heater enable disable switch. The LED green light should illuminate and remain solid. No illumination of the LED light is an indication of a defective battery. Also, the battery packaging should be designed to prevent the accidental activation of the heater switch during shipping. After verifying the CMS is active, press the heater enable disable switch again to turn off the LED. These images are how the lithium ion batteries are packaged to comply with all regulations and shipped by TAPD. The box is double thick wall. The label is UN 3480 Class 9 classification, and the shipping boxes have passed the UN testing. If the lithium ion battery is to be used in cold weather, the battery doesn't need to be removed from the aircraft for room temperature storage if certain cold weather operation conditions are met. Always ensure that the battery is fully charged before allowing a battery to be cold soaked. Cell voltage will drop as the cell electrolyte freezes and the cell impedance increases. Do not allow a battery with less than 20 volts to be cold soaked. Charge the battery first. For cold weather operations, the battery has an internal preheat capability. Preheat may be activated by pressing the heater enable disable switch on the front face of the battery. This function will remain active for about two hours. When the green LED is flashing, the heater is active. 
when the green LED is continuously illuminated, the battery has reached its operating temperature. If the aircraft is expected to be kept in temperature soaks below negative 10 degrees Celsius for more than an hour, the lithium ion battery does not need to be removed from the aircraft since it has the capability to internally self-heat itself. For lithium ion batteries that have been cold soaked below negative 10 degrees C, the battery can be preheated in one of two ways. At temperatures of zero degrees Celsius to negative 20 degrees Celsius, battery preheat can be initiated by turning on the battery switch in the cockpit while the battery is online. This can also be achieved if an external power unit is connected. When the battery is active, it will automatically power on internal heaters to warm the battery and will keep the internal heaters powered on if required to keep the battery temperature above zero degrees Celsius throughout the entire flight mission. At temperatures of negative 10 degrees Celsius to negative 55 degrees Celsius, battery preheat can be initiated by pressing the battery preheat button on the front of the battery. The battery will self-power internal heaters to warm up the cells to a temperature ready for APU starts. In the event of an in-flight emergency, when the load shed occurs, the battery heaters will be deactivated. However, the battery will already be at its nominal operating temperature to provide the emergency discharge available required by the aircraft. For a Textron Aviation aircraft, the lithium ion battery installation includes a CAS message system that has specific enunciations for the lithium ion battery, an onboard battery monitor assembly, and an aircraft recording system for battery performance trend monitoring. When one faulted module is indicated, the battery needs to be serviced or replaced, typically within 10 flight hours or 20 calendar days. When two or more faulted modules are detected, the battery needs to be removed from aircraft service. To achieve the most service life from a lithium ion battery, proper storage practices must be followed at all times. Accurate storage room temperatures must be maintained. Storage room temperatures outside of recommended limits will reduce the service life expectancy of the battery. Batteries must be charged upon receipt as they are shipped below full state of charge. Minimize the time a battery stays at full discharge. Recharge stored batteries on regular intervals. And, as we've mentioned before, lithium ion batteries can be stored and serviced with other battery types. Lithium ion batteries are expected to have a service life of over six years and with over 7,000 engine starts. The battery should be removed from service when it has failed a capacity check for the installed aircraft. Another advantage of lithium ion batteries is disposal. They can be normally disposed of in the United States. Be sure to check with your regional regulatory authorities for proper disposal recommendations when outside of the U.S. The battery warranty is two years. But as a reminder, the warranty is voided if the case has been opened or if the recommended maintenance intervals have not been followed. A thermal event is highly unlikely. However, if one would occur, the system is designed to contain the event within the battery case and vent overboard. Always have the vent system connected and allow the event to complete before any recovery activities begin. To reduce the likelihood of a thermal event, be sure to always follow the recommendations provided by the battery manufacturer and by Textron Aviation. I hope you found this information enlightening. If you have any questions, please contact your product teams at the numbers listed here.